Welcome to Jakarta, the largest city in Indonesia, and what a stadium that we have for you this evening. There it is, lit up in the lights, the office buildings surrounding us. We are in the heart of the city, and it sprawls out around the arena. My name is Matt Groom, and I'm joined by Alana Yip in the commentary box. Alana, how are you doing this evening? I am excellent, thank you. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm very, very excited for this comp, and one of the reasons is the route that we have. But first of all, before we talk about that, let's look at the semi-finals that took place earlier this afternoon. So it was a pretty special final. There's Alex Waterhouse taking fall. That's yourself, oh, Ilana. That's me. Looking good. And that man there, well, it's his first World Cup, Ravi Andy, the only Indonesian athlete into the finals, his first finals. Incredible to see him. Jesse Gruber missing out, which means he can't win the overall title for 2022. Rayu getting high on the wall and it was a tricky route for everyone battling the sweat in the middle of the heat of the day huge triple clutch move at the top of the men's route Luca Potija the only one who can still win the overall Laura Rugger are trying hard as she heel hooks her way to glory at the top and Hannah Moyle topping out and getting into her first ever senior World Cup lead final she's over the moon Jan So jumping to the top clipping the chains and it really was a spectacular semis. Do go back and watch it if you haven't seen any of the action. We got a lot of falls like that. And Yanya Garnbrett, that's how close she came to topping out. But she had to settle for third place and a little bit irritated coming off the stage. <laughs> yeah. That's our top eight, ladies and gentlemen. Mia Crample down the bottom. She'll be out first. Jan So qualifying in first position, so she'll be out last. Hannah Moyle and Yanya Garnbrett in the top three. The Yanya effect. Now, Imori is not here this weekend. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the Japanese coach. They said it was a selection thing. They wanted her to be ready for Japan. Uh, uh, Korea. Sorry. Asian no, Championships? No, for the uh, the combined in Japan oh, coming okay, up yeah. soon. They want to kind of rest her a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure <laughs> how, how much to read into that, but that was the coach's official reason yeah. anyway. So that's why she's missing. Now we look at the men. One, two, three, four. Four <laughs> Japanese <laughs> athletes in the top four. Amazing. They are pretty impressive, aren't they, as a team? Yeah. Sebastian Helenke, good to see him back. And then Ravi Andy, awesome, from Tim Indonesia. I got my contacts in Indonesia messaging me throughout the day. They were so psyched he was in the semis, and then they went over the moon when he got into finals. I have never seen a more impressive fight on a, a climb than his semi-final route. That was incredible. Do you think some of it was that home crowd effect? Because he seemed to find energy throughout the route. I, I mean, maybe a little bit, but I think he's just a really good climber. <laughs> he is a very talented national champion, and we have a feature with him coming up a little bit later if you're watching on certain streaming platforms. But that is our stadium. It's, it's weird. It's like a little enclave in the middle of the city because we're surrounded by trees here. Yeah, you can see these big buildings around us, but also a lot of greenery around this part of Jakarta. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And around us, though, the city changes throughout. You know, there are poorer parts of the city. There are richer parts of the city. Yes. And the traffic. <laughs> Everyone talks about the traffic. And the it, motorbikes. The motorbikes. Yep, you have to be on your game and tell you when crossing the road. But the whole city just never seems to stop moving. It's not sleeping, it's moving. Yes. It's like almost not nowhere I've been before. It's, it's pretty cool. Right, let's talk about the route. It's time because we have a men's route. We have a women's route. However, on the head wall, <laughs> things combine. They are finishing on the same series of holds. And this hasn't been seen before. No. It's really exciting. I think uh, for so long, people have wanted to see what you know the women can do on the men's routes and vice versa, wh how they're different, how they're similar. And yeah, we're yep. getting a little look at that today. We get to see it. Now, <laughs> things are different down below. So the men's goes through the big green. I'm going to call it green. I don't quite, still don't quite know what color it is. Maybe it's more turquoise. But the big triangle volume in the middle, it goes right through the middle of that. Very intense moves, power throughout. The women's also tricky, a bit of an easier start for them. But the red holds at the top is where it's going to be fascinating to so watch. Men is left and women is right, is exactly, that correct? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Men's is on the left, women's on the right. Men's has a running jump start. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> Always a little bit scary. Oh, that must be terrifying. Dayan Lee is out his first finals. Good to see him on the lead circuit. He looked very impressive during semi finals. Mm -hmm. He's just 19. Young Won Chon's prodigy. 
we trained with him a lot this summer. Just randomly would end up at the same gym, and he's very impressive to watch. It really is. Yeah, got bouldering skills as well. Luca Potager, he needs to come seventh or highest to take the overall victory here tonight. So it's his to lose at this point. And there he is. <laughs> Home crowd hero. Ravi Andy Ramadan, 19, and oh my, I, I can't imagine. He stopped during the semis twice to hype the crowd up. Yeah. So he was fully aware, like he wasn't just 100% focused on the climbing. He knew, you know, everyone was there to cheer him on. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. The crowd's gonna go crazy. Sebastian Helenke on his comeback run, finding a rich vein of form is that man. And I love watching him climb. Yes, always. Oscar, so Victor, my co-commentator earlier, pointed out that uh, his hair might be good for the heat because it's more uh, more cooling, which is a good point. <laughs> Masahiro Higuchi, 30 years old, sending it for us slightly older athletes yes. out there. <laughs> and then Ao Yurikuza, always calm, cool and collected is that man. Over under the sky, is 10 years difference between him and Masahiro. And then Satoni Yoshida will be announced next, coming through the curtain onto the stage. Such a strong Japanese presence, as you'd expect. Yeah, they've been a powerhouse country this year. I mean, not just this year, of course. <laughs> yeah, always. And then the next, it's not a World Cup, but the next combined event is in Japan. So yep. that's going to be interesting, how good they are. Yes. And then finally, Hedimasa Nishida will be the last athlete to climb. He won the uh, Fisu Games in Innsbruck mm. before this. So he has stood on top of a podium before. So that is the men's lineup. They will be climbing first. That's some of our crowd who are very excited. I know you've been mobbed by autograph hunters. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> people have wanted more autographs than any other place I've been. I'm not sure if it's partially because I'm half Chinese. And yeah. Could be. Well, a lot of the athletes have been treated like absolute stars. They're accused as always. It seems like the, the people around Jakarta really know climbing. Like we had taxi drivers who knew about uh, the World Cup happening was, was, and knew that Indonesia was a powerhouse in speed climbing. Yeah, and we thought the president was coming the other night. Apparently the president's coming tonight. So we have presidential... Uh, the president? Oh, I thought just his wife was coming. Oh, okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just the wife. I don't know. Wh whatever, there is a presidential family member yes. in the stadium. And uh, so you can imagine security tight here. And now we're watching the observation of this route. This is from earlier on. It's not what's happening right now. And you can see the rope. It will join the women's rope at the top. There it is, coming through. And I wonder what the athlete's reaction must have been to that. <laughs> I wonder if any of the women and the men talked about it together. Yeah, exactly. Because I knew this about yeah. four days ago. So I was aware that this was going to happen. And I uh, obviously had to keep it under wraps, uh -huh. uh, which has been very difficult, trust me, <laughs> because it's so unique. I was walking in, yeah, just down the street, and I saw in the distance, and I was like, there's no, there's only one top part. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it coming. Well, that was the men's observation. Those are our men, male climbers. So, Doyon Lee will be out first of all. Dimasha and Nishida out last. Yeah, so Doyan Lee will be out first, and yeah, his first final, and what a place to make your first finals here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the audience, we're at the back of the stadium in the commentary box, and literally, we're the, the, the audience are pressing up against the barriers separating us from them. It's packed here. And I would like to point out, it is a Monday evening here. It is not a holiday. It is a regular working day, and the stadium is pretty packed. Let's talk about conditions before we get going, because we know how hot it is here, and during the semis, it was a battle for a lot of people. Yeah. It's a bit cooler now, but that humidity still persists. Mm -hmm. How difficult does it make it for the athletes? Oh, I think it can be a huge advantage for somebody who is a little bit more heat adjusted, who has been here for a few days. You know, for some people, they might even be a, li a little jet lagged still. So, yeah, it can it can be hard. and. Any open-handed holds, the humidity makes it all, and the heat make it a lot harder to hold. Well, that oh. was the run jump start there. I'm so glad he got that. <laughs> all right. I like how he sized it up for a couple seconds first. Yeah, he looked at the press. The uh, 
the spotters are there because although the surface there looks like it, it's almost padded like in a gym, it's actually just a covering over the hard floor. Yeah. Right, so quite straightforward for the men. They're going to aim left where there's a potential double jump up to the two blue pinches. Ooh. And then he's aiming for that green dish on the left-hand side with a toe up on the right. Yeah, the spotters, even during qualifiers, I looked down at the second draw and there was two spotters underneath me and I was like, uh, should I know something? I know, I was, I was tempted to see what would actually happen if someone had fallen off. Like, would there be a catch? Oh, Doyan Lee swings on the left. One arm catch. Oh, okay, so a little bit of a moment for him there early on. <laughs> I guess that was the jump, not yeah. up to here. Sorry, yeah. yes, yes, you're right. And gets a heel and rocks up. So five minutes up on the clock. That's the time the athletes have to complete this route. Six total, but he's used one minute. Now. Yeah. So he's got quite a lot of time, but keep an eye on it because, especially in Edinburgh, uh, the toll, you were commentating, you know how close the time came. Oh, man. Yeah, those, the wall was longer than this wall, so there were more moves, and it was more vertical, so it's easier for the athletes to slow down, I think. So Doyon Lee now comes beneath the big volume that dominates the center of this wall. And if you recognize it from Chamonix, it's because it is the Chamonix wall. <laughs> Your eyes don't deceive you. Same one. So this is where things really step up for the men. It's hard to read, it's physical, and Doyon Lee hasn't got that clip in yet on the right. Uh, we saw some issues in the women's semi-final with people not getting clips early enough. Let's figure it out. Yeah, drops down on the... Uh, oh, a little bit shaky for that clip. Long draws are always a little scary. And you can see how overhanging it is by the amount the draws are hanging away from the wall. Oh, <laughs> fingertips only saving in there. Now bumps and adjusts into the dish. Reaches up high. Nervy stuff from Doyon Lee. Uh -oh. He almost dropped the beginning of the qualifier, one of his runs in the qualifying, the very first move. Oh. So he's had a few shaky moments throughout the comp. He's recovered well, though. Made, made his first final. Yeah, he's done. And he's now right in the center of the wall, as middle as you can get on the thing. That spike is a bit of a slab above. Coaches watching on, filming every move. It's an interesting setting here, Alana. It's it's not easy to see and read. Mm -hmm. So Diane reaches up again, having to readjust. It almost looks like a, a pocket there, but his handprint looks like the slope. Oh you yeah, it's it a, a sloper. sloper. Yeah, they kind of it's a pocket. Maybe if you turn it the other way. Do you think it's, there's room for a thumb in there, or is it just uh, sort of one no. of those holes? It's just a sloper. The, it's not in the right position to get your thumb in. So Diane having to readjust. Maybe you can use it as a heel hook later as well. I'm not sure. All right, now he starts to go uh, up. Toe hook. There we go. Yeah, toe locked in. And the feet start to disappear <laughs> a little bit. Oh, no. A swing and a miss for doing on the 26, his score. He was climbing very committed. Maybe 27, I think they just updated the score there. But yeah, that was really cool to see what very good performance, I would say, for a first final ever. Yeah, that was strong from him. Kept the nerves together despite a couple of shaky moments. Yeah, the scoreboard on the left, that will tick over and you'll see the winner's position there so you guys watching can keep track of it. And it does sometimes adjust and change. Uh, and there are also appeals as well that can come through and tweak the score. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that will be altered, but generally it's what's on screen. Yeah, so he should have gotten 27 plus there. So we'll wait for that to be updated. So that was the swing that he almost dropped down low. Yeah, well, it looked like he almost Thank dropped it, but I don't know what he felt. Maybe he didn't feel like he... Yeah, maybe he just kind of went for it and just the, the amount of commitment <laughs> yeah. swung him sideways. Yeah. So Doyan Lee falls at the end of the volume. Oh. Oh, it was on the crimp, but... Yeah, it looked like maybe jumping to that oh, was a little bit much for the size of the holes. So I'm not sure. Yeah, especially with that, with the humidity we talked about, sort of hitting a crimp that dynamically. Although you can get it, it's easy to pop off it as well. Could be, yeah. So Luca Potija needs to get more than seven to take the overall title. What a couple of cocks he's had. Really incredible to see. Yeah, well, first win on home soil. That was <laughs> very, very emotional. Yeah, it was. And the crowd reacted accordingly. And then Silver in Edinburgh recently. It's good to see someone. I mean, we've had a run of very good male Slovenian climbers. You, know, you think Domin, you know, you, you think of Yerne, for example. But it's good to see someone recently step up like Luca has done. He's 
Yeah. Regularly making finals now. Yes. So Luca gets underway at the bottom of this route. You can see the shining texture on the wall, the no-tex part of a dual-tex hold. Something you want to avoid standing on. Well, yes. Unless you want to go for a little ride. <laughs> Yeah, though we have seen a few like uh, footholds that are you have to stand on. Yeah, the Would setters it? sometimes do that just to make you be scared. Actually, Laura stood really well on the no text part of a hold in the key moment in semifinals, in a key moment. Yeah, yeah it is possible to do. It's just, I mean, especially, I, I think it's always probably easier for the athlete because they can actually feel. But for us watching, I get so nervous whenever they do that. Oh, what's Luca going to do for this jump? Oh, he's eyeing it up. Okay, a little, oh, wow. a so little bit more steady. Yeah, kept the right hand. It wasn't quite as exciting as Lee Do Hyun, but... Yeah, it's quite a good hold. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know the angle's hard, but he'll get a chance to rest. But of course, it's one of those holds that, although it's good, it's, I mean, he's only a few draws in. You don't want to hang around for too long because yeah. you're not pumped yet. But you might have gotten a little bit nervous on that, setting up for that jump and doing it. So it's good just to be able to chill, shake the nerves out of your arms before, <laughs> before you keep going. But Lee Do Hyun, I mean, he committed right away, and then he just kept going. Yeah, true. Move quickly through there. So now we go from left to right. High heels. Steady work through this part. This is that dish, and you can see the shine. Gets his foot on a screw on. Matches, he comes into the pinches now. Now, we really start to ramp things up. I'm trying to work out the degrees of this, because, yeah, I don't know the degrees of the wall, but it's around about the 50 mark through the middle, I think. I think so, and then once he's here onto the volume, it'll be steeper, obviously. Yeah, and the root set is putting extra volumes on just to kick it back even more. Yeah, and that big turquoise. I guess it's technically not a volume, that turquoise thing is actually part of the wall, but it looks like a volume for all intents and purposes it yeah, is. Yeah, you're right, I keep calling it a volume, don't I? But yeah, it's part of the wall itself, the structure of it. Okay, so this is where Do Yuan Lee had to spend a lot of time adjusting the feet, getting the heel hooks locked in. He got that clip in better than Do Yuan Lee did. That blue one. Now it gets the yellow. I think all of us want to see the top part of this route. I just want to see the difference in techniques between the male and female climbers, if there is any. Yeah. I hope they've said it in a way that there we do see different betas through it. That would be exciting. I love that part about watching films. So he's got the heel in the dish. Oh! oh. He spins down as well, less than Doyan needs at 25, his score. Ooh. Well, now he's going to have to wait and see if anybody else falls below him to see if he'll win that overall title. Yeah, exactly. Seventh is what he's aiming for. So a few nervous moments for him. I mean, higher would be what he's really aiming for. But <laughs> gold would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, it's not going to be a gold. So two done out of our eight. This was his moment. He made that jump look more solid than Doyan Lee did. And then cruised through the rest of it. But this is where things started to get hard for him. Placed the foot and then thought differently. Got the heel in. Kind of missing it. It's awkward. You can't see it very well. Around the corner of it. Then cross through. The heel is now locked into that dish. Ah, but he wasn't standing on anything with his right foot. So when he released his left heel, he couldn't put his weight onto any other foot. I suppose by the hands aren't good enough to push into the wall as much as you need to to make that smear work for the right foot. Yeah, and he was, had already released one hand, so... Yeah. Well, here is the All hero right. of the night. Yes. Ravi Andy Ramadan, his first finals, his first World Cup, for goodness sake. Local Indonesian climber. He's eyeing up, please don't fall on this jump. Oh, <laughs> okay. He did a different beater because you can press down on yeah. the bottom. He didn't, he went on the wall. I don't know why I was more nervous for him than for any... Well, I, I want to see him do really well, that's why. I do too. And first World Cup for his final. Yeah, and, and go back and watch his run if you haven't seen it, because it was really special. His semi-final? Sorry, his semi-final, yeah. yeah. It was... <laughs> he, I mean, twi as I said earlier, twice he hyped the crowd up. <laughs> I 
and got very high on it and have to get in here. And people were so stoked. And I think that a lot of people realized when... Uh, oh, he's standing, sorry, right on the dual text there with the right foot bumping yeah. up. Or I think people realized exactly when whoever it was fell uh, in semifinals below him and that pushed him into a final spot uh, or guaranteed his final spot. I think that like, seemed like a lot of the crowd understood that. Yeah. Because there was a massive cheer. Yeah, it's an educated crowd. They really understand climbing. Yeah. Right, so the yeah. jump. <gasps> oh. Double. Wow, so three people in three different betas here. Well, that was the most scary. So two hands in it. Got it. Well, it's going to be a tough clip. Yeah, really awkward. Look at that drop knee. Oh, come on. Trying to work it out, trying to get the finger in to steady it. Can't get it. Now grabs oh. it, clips it. Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, good. Okay. But he's in, he hasn't really in a resting place because ideally you want to drop back down almost into that dish. Yeah. He's gone above it. It's better than. Oh, no, he heard you. <laughs> that never happens. So he does drop back down. Smart. Smart climbing from him. Yeah, needed an extra shake and yeah. a composure moment, I think. That whistling, by the way, is because the, the crowd are right next to us here. <laughs> the gentleman in front of us getting very excited, as is everyone in the stadium. I wish I could cheer like that right now for him. Yeah, he is going for it. Blow everyone's eardrums off him. Well, I hope he's enjoying this moment. It doesn't Ooh, get much better than this. Here. Okay, that actually looked better than what the others did. Oh! So working his feet over gets the crimps. Standing. Uh, there's a jib on there, I think. Yeah, I think you're right with the right foot. Yeah. The hardest route <laughs> that he has in his local climbing wall here is 8A, which makes you realize what they're working with. It's definitely harder, though. I heard some people saying the 8A was a bit more like 8B. Oh, yeah. Savage setting in that gym. <laughs> yes. Right, so he reaches under with the awkward clip over his leg. Gets that one in nicely. Oh but this is where things get hard for the man. Oh no! And he does slip out of it. Just misses that pocket. I think he's going to be pleased with that though. 22 his score. <laughs> and you saw there the rain falling. It is actually raining here, which has cooled things down a little bit. It Whoa. shouldn't affect the wall unless it starts to blow into the wall. If the, uh, I did not even notice. Yeah, it's running quite hard now. So it is sheltered unless we get a real wind blowing it through. Yeah. The the back of the wall is covered. Yeah, so it should be protected. You can see it falling heavily. And the exit is the crowd, I guess, just in time for them to see <laughs> Raviandi climb, and now they can leave. Yeah, there is quite a few <laughs> quite a few of our audience leaving now after well, he's Well, it's it. pouring, I think. That would be why. That is true, yeah. To be fair, uh, I, I left even in one finals this year when it was pouring. Hey, Lahana. I was really cold. <laughs> that's, that's fair enough. Well, the temperature has dropped. It's a bit cooler here. The wind is starting to blow. We don't think it's going to affect things, but let's watch this again. So this was the jump. <laughs> oh. Even the second time, my heart dropped. He did. He just got that second hand in, so I don't think he would have held it with just the one. No. Oh, almost matched his own hand in there. Yeah. Well, that was the moment, and then he fumbled the clip a little bit, dropped back down to rest, but that was the slip. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be a little disappointed with the fumbling of the clip. Yeah, it's one of those moments, I think anyone who is vaguely a climber will understand his feelings in that moment. You know, when you're missing it, if, if it doesn't matter if you're outdoor climbing, indoor climbing, it's yeah. a horrible moment. You're like almost clipping it, but you just can't quite, just fumbling, no! Oh. <laughs> Just out of reach. Well, that is our pouring rain now, it really is. We are the rainy season here in Asia. We've had storms a couple of days earlier on in the week, but they've stayed away recently. But it's come again here this evening. But a lot of the crowd are staying. I mean, it's warm. It's still warm. Yes. I'm still sweating in a t-shirt and shorts, so. So Sebastian Helenke is calling someone over. I think it's getting a little bit Oh, trippy. the mats are wet. His shoes are wet. Yeah. So there is, this is something they were a bit concerned about, which is the structure itself might start to leak, which could 
cause a bit of a delay here. I think also it could be that he just walked over some wet spots. That's what happened in semifinals. Some of the mats on the way to the wall were wet. And I had to stop before I climbed as well to dry off my shoes. Yeah, and he can take his time through here. We'll be allowed a lot of the time. I'm trying to see if I can see any sort of droplets forming. Mm. Oh, it is wet. Yeah, look at those shoes. Soaking. Yeah. And I guess because the walk from the isolation area to it's the not wall covered. is not covered. No. no. So and there's like carpets. Yeah. Too, so it also rained a little earlier, just before finals. So they might have been wet already from that. The rain is actually stopping. It's eased off a bit. Not stopping, but it's eased stopping, off. Stopping yeah, is a strong word. Yeah. I'm, tr I'm trying to be very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm English. This is this is just a, a gentle Light, drizzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No raincoat needed today. No. Well, <laughs> Sebastian looks composed and calm still, which is good. He took his time. Yeah, he's experienced enough to know that he's he can just stop the comp basically for that something like that. Yeah, there's dry time. shoes is important. Yeah, although there is a 40 second Ooh, limit usually, on. it's different like this. Oh, I thought he was gone then. Yeah. Okay, he's up and on. Gets a high heel. He'll make the first clip and then properly be underway. Yeah, there we go. The spotter leaves. So that's our top three at the moment. Ramadan in the bronze medal position with that 22 plus, then Luka Potija, and then Doyan Lee after that. So here we go, Alana, get ready to be nervous. Don't worry, I always am. <laughs> <laughs> He's got toes in, take some of the pressure off, and now we'll let him unlock it, trust that crimp and launch left. Ooh, oh, oh, stylish. A Drops. little scary when he like fully relaxed onto his arm there. I thought, I thought he was a goner actually. <laughs> but again, four people in four different ways to do that move. Yeah, it's it one similar to Luca. But it's one of those where you can't really you read it away. But I, I, I would imagine that when you get there, it's kind of it's kind of how you feel in that moment mm -hmm. of how you take it on. Yeah. Sebastian Helenke is through. Now, no one has fallen in this part yet. High heel in. And we're coming up to the halfway point of the men's final. No one yet getting to that shared top sequence. The red holds at the end of this route. You can see his feet there dry, so he did a good job of cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he wouldn't have started climbing before they were fully dry. I guess this clip, that, that, this clip now, everyone seemed to make it look quite awkward. Do you think there's another way? I mean, he's clipping it low. Yeah, Perhaps that was better. smart. Yeah. I, I think probably those holds are just not very comfortable. I mean, that looked terrible. <laughs> so I think people just don't want to clip it. And they think, oh, maybe the next hold will be better, next, maybe the next hold, and then they're just not. Yeah, and suddenly so you're stuck in that awkward position, and you have to do the clip. Yeah. He's still looking really good. He's looking fresh, but this is where it seems to come to pieces a little bit. Yeah. He's not using that, that dish, that uh, circular hold for his hand. I'm not sure who, who touched that. Or a toe hook, like, oh, there we go, he's heel hooking it. Most like Lee Do-hyun. But releasing this toe is where things are hard. And this is where Lee Do-hyun fell as a plus off of this one. Oh, there you go, he didn't jump. Oh, <gasps> but then he falls. Much better with the feet, but still sent him down. God, it looks so tension-y there. Yeah, we'll get a replay of that from a different angle, hopefully, to see exactly what happened there with the hands. It's yeah. hard to see what, what went on. But I think, yeah, he should get... Oh, yeah, they did give him 28. So Sebastian Alenke jumps to the top of the leaderboard. Undoes that knot. <laughs> Someone help him out. It's kind of embarrassing when <laughs> you can't undo your own knot after. It's, you're up there on the stage struggling. I think it should be standard. Well, let's <laughs> standard help. That was a drop down. It was an odd move. Yeah. Like sort of an opposite one armor. Ooh, I wouldn't want to do that onto my shoulder. Uh -huh. oh. And then here's what happened. So let's look at the hands. I was just kind of swinging around to get the right foot. Yeah. Oh, wow, that right hand looks terrible. Side of the volume. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, that's the crux for sure for the men's. And now we're looking at the match. Well, let's check out the leaderboard here. And we have a little pause in proceedings. Sebastian Helenka, we saw him climb, 28th. Then Doyan Lee, Luka Potja, and Ravi Andy, the local hero, in fourth. So that's our scoreboard. Yeah, pretty good separation. Well, well, we were talking about those brothers earlier on, the two national champions. Now, I spent some time with them a couple of days ago in the climbing wall. Let's see the interview that I did with them, shall we? We're in a mall in the heart of the city of Jakarta because this is one of the climbing walls the national Indonesian team use for their training. Obviously, we had to find out more. is Indo Climb and it's really close to the main climbing venue and we're here to chat to Renata. The national team are here right now. Do you see these guys quite often in here practicing lead, speed and boulder? So I basically know them from their little. Not many people know Indonesia and the lead climbers and the boulders and we want to have them too. So that's why we have these facilities and yeah ever since we have this facilities uh, they've been training here with us good luck for the world cup but what's your predictions you're going to get any of the lead athletes into the semi-finals finals maybe um semi-finals yes hopefully <laughs> all right fingers crossed right let's check out the national team two brothers here, national champions, Rafianti, Rafianto. So first of all, tell me, what's it going to be like climbing on the weekend on that lead wall? Uh, yeah, I'm so excited because this is my first time for the World Cup uh, in the lead category. Yeah, I hope I get my best result and then I hope I can get the another chance for the uh, Sorry about that. We, uh, you can watch the full video of that on the IFSC Facebook pages. Uh, if you want to see that, that video is out there. But we are moving on with the live competition. The next up is Mashihiro Higuchi, who is taking time to clean those shoes. I think he might walk barefoot over. Yeah, so when it is wet, they give you that option, or they tell you you should do that, is, is just put your shoes on in front of the wall to avoid getting your shoes wet. So shoes on for him, almost ready to go. Athlete number five, Mashihiro Higuchi. No one yet getting into the top of the wall. We really want to see at least one man, male athlete up there. It would be cool if we saw more women than men up there. Although it doesn't, they're not climbing the same bottom of the route, so it doesn't really matter. But Yeah, that, and that's worth pointing out. This isn't the same route for the men and women. It's not identical. It's a different start for the women. It's just the head wall that's the same. So we but we definitely want to see as many people up there as we can to be able to see both men and women on the same part of the route. And apparently it's graded, uh, you know, it's about 8C, the top of that wall, if you were to sort of take it in isolation, which is almost impossible to say. So I, I'm saying this with a pinch of salt, okay, <laughs> everyone listening at home. It's not just that, but just to give you an idea of the difficulty at the top. So it's spicy. Yeah, it's going to be spicy. But we know that the women are climbing 8C routes in competitions. Oh, yeah. So are the men, 8C plus sometimes. It's very close as it is. You were saying there was a rumor about uh, Yanya climbing the men's route in Slovenia when everyone had gone. There's a rumor anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently she was up on it. Yeah, I heard that the, the men's route might have been a little easier than the women's route. There we go. Well, we saw all the women fall really low. It looked really hard, exactly. except for Yanya and Aimori. Well, Mashihiro Hiyuchi, no problems with the start of the route, jumping up easily. comes now with the shoulder sequences aiming for that big pocket you can see all chalked up and ready I'm excited to see what beta he does for the for the jump yeah, it's, I guess it's a big enough hold you're going to where you can have a little bit of leeway with the methods you use mm -hmm. 
It's got the potential to make a bit of a mistake as well and still recover from it, as we've seen some of the athletes do. Yes. It's just working out how to get that toe released. Oh. Okay. Same as Luca. Kept the right hand. Is Less exciting looking, but safer looking. <laughs> yeah, no giant swing. I think oh, my favorite so far has to be Sebastian sort of lower off with the one arm. Oh. That looks painful for the shoulder. Yeah. But he's through nice and safely. No, my favorite was definitely Rabiani. Oh, the double leap. The, the, double, the double yeah. Hand. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. So now Mashihiro, is, it's a case of managing the pump through here. Toe yeah, probably climbing this section really efficiently uh, is key. The rain has stopped as well. To give you a weather update, the wind is blowing and it's nice, it's the coolest it's been actually all evening. That's the top three. Luca will be anxiously keeping an eye on the score for the overall. No, Luca did it. We didn't even comment on that, but because Raviandi fell below him. Oh, yes, true. Luca's so he has won the overall, yeah. The overall champion. Yeah. So Congratulations Luca. to Luca. Yes, Luca Potija. We get, we get a medal after all this evening. <laughs> right, so he is now working his way through this trick. He cuts loose. Matches his own hand with the heel. Ooh. Heel above the hand, yeah. Ooh. That... Um, Drawhanger was not covered. His toe was really close to it. Yeah, there's none of them covered actually. You know that Same camp. as Edinburgh. I didn't really yeah. like that. Yeah, we do like to see it when they're put in. And it's a good shot to see how blocked some of the holes are. The root setters do that just to make it a little more difficult. It's more precise. Gets the toe, but this is where things really get difficult. And he sticks it. Oh, oh, oh no, no, he doesn't. He almost had it. But he will probably, yeah, he'll tie Sebastian Lenka and move ahead because of the countback. So he jumps into the lead. Oh, yeah, I think Sebastian's method for that was the better one, releasing slowly rather than trying to jump for it. Yeah, his method looks like something the root setters would have thought about, you know, just working your, your feet up and through it. Yeah. Big swing on oh, that kind of an angle going sideways and it's a big ass and as we said the tiny tiny crimp he's going to. Yeah, I think if the right hold was better it would work, but from what we saw from the shot, it's really bad, really small. So Japanese team supporting him down at the front in the athletes area. <laughs> They're rain ponchos. I want one of them. So this is the start, which he made look really good and easy. He's been around long enough to know starts like that. Held it in the safest way. Legs kicking out, bringing them immediately back into the wall. Little adjustment. Let's watch this, because he had it. Just tried to re... Oh, you can see the right hand coming off. Yeah. You get the feeling one micro adjustment more and he would have been locked in on that. Yeah. Three to go. Al Yudakuza is ne next. In fact, well, all Japanese from now on. You see the differences in the routes from that shot from the wide. Al Yudakuza is always really focused. Oh, look at those the socks that he's wearing. I'm seeing more of this. And I was talking to someone about it. Apparently it helps with the grip. And then I was considering, you know, in this sweaty environment, if, if it's bare feet, yeah. it makes sense to put in an extra layer of grip if your feet are sweating that much. I guess so, so your feet don't move as much in your shoes, because also when it's hot, your shoes have sort of, they get a little bit bigger. And, oh. Yeah, so it's kind of... But I've never actually seen, like, I've, I know that they wear socks. I didn't know that they were toeless. Yeah, I think you might have <laughs> cut the end off those toes. Because oh, I, I've okay. seen those socks worn by a few people with toes. Oh. So maybe he's just adapted them, perhaps. Oh, modified the gear. But yeah, it is, it's... I wonder how many... he made his own. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. <laughs> grip tape in there. So Al, looking up at the wall, taking his time. Clock won't start yet. He's got 40 seconds in order to relook at it. Eyes nice 
raise this up. Two hands up. Yeah, different, different betas for the first move too. Some people are pressing, some people are just running. Yeah, it was the second hold, the one low down was chalked up by the root setters to, to indicate a press there. Yeah. But no With one's a big handprint on exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see it there at the bottom of your screen. No one no, really using it. Sebastian did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the root, well, you're a root setter yourself at times, mm -hmm. and these little clues that you put in for the climbers. Yeah. Yeah, press, you always do something like that. You chalk up your hand a ton, and you give the volume or the hold a big slap so you can see a big handprint. <laughs> The root setters were telling me they don't like to put tick marks on when it's this humid because they just rub off and it can be a bit unfair. That's what I was told anyway. Oh, interesting. Oh, this is different. So he hasn't got the toe in. Oh, that he had so much less swing. Yeah. That was chill. Well, everyone else is having to unlock that toe and, and make the swing, which obviously yeah, brings your momentum around. When they have the right toe hook, it keeps their body so much further to the right, and then they're jumping so far to the left. Yeah, there's a ton of momentum, like you said. But he kept his feet more under him. Okay. Yeah. Relying on the crimp. So, cutting loose gets the heel instead of a toe. Pump management from now on until we get to the green volume. Yeah, still looking pretty relaxed, but there's definitely the holds aren't great, and there's a lot of yeah cutting feet and swinging around, so it can burn energy if you're not being absolutely precise. So he makes the first of the long clips. They've been extended to try to alleviate some of the rope drag that can be created but it makes it harder to clip them when they're so long, they're swinging. Sometimes they can be swinging in the wind. They could be swinging from the last rope that was pulled through them. They'll be twisting. They're yeah, a little bit more finicky to do. Do you ever practice it? I practice long draws, yeah, because I'm not very good at clipping long draws. And before this year, I was legitimately a little bit scared of them. <laughs> I fumbled many a long draw in my day. You've got an image now of a long draw hanging in your kitchen and you just go <laughs> past it and clip it every time. Yeah. Well, he's into the dish with the left hand. Oh, it's raining again. Yeah, it's coming in out. I think the storm is sort of circling this, uh, these skyscrapers around us. Doesn't really seem to be changing. Yeah, you can see there it is the rain. Doesn't seem to be changing the conditions too much. It's just damp on the approach. Yeah, it's already, it was already super humid even earlier. <laughs> Right, well, we're nearing the danger point here, where we've lost everyone. It's a high toe. Oh, yeah, there, okay, he's walking. Oh, he jumps. Oh, he's got some strong Sticks fingers, though. It. Well, we saw his, his crimp strength down low. He's still got a move to make. Oh, trying hard. Oh, oh the left no. fires. <laughs> well, technically, we've seen someone on the joining point. Technically. Yes. <laughs> One red hole done. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe it wasn't, it was just below it, actually. It's just below it. Yeah. Well, we came Two close to holds. seeing it. But that's a um, bronze medal for him. Yeah, true, so he's up into the medals. Good work from out. Mighty crimp strength going on to hold that on the jump. Is that his first medal? I'll have a little look, see at the stats. Yeah, great work from him. No, he won. Uh, silver in Innsbruck. Oh, of course. For lead, yeah. so yeah, so not the first medal of the year, but yeah, so his second coming in. But he's had 11th in Edinburgh and then fourth in Copper, 26th in Briançon. So it's been kind of a bit up and down for him, but now he's got a silver. So consistency lacking a bit, but this was a great climb from him. That's how close he came. And then, yeah, yeah, I don't think the women would touch the next hold. Yeah. He goes a little bit to the, more to the right. Yeah, just over the head wall is, I think, exactly where they would meet. <laughs> I don't think you can describe it as a dry fire. It was a, a wet fire off the hold. <laughs> is that a thing? Oh, it's, it's not. <laughs> the hold is not wet, no. just to be clear. Yeah. <laughs> we, we think. We think. Has, I want to see if he's got the socks on as well. I could, didn't see it then in that shot. I think he has got some socks on. Him, though. I think so. Well, I mean, on his other foot is his normal sock, I think, in his shoe. Now, I'm mentioning this because everyone asked me about it. Those are titanium patches, little bits of metal in those circles on his arm, and they help to, apparently, help to stimulate the muscles. And it's 
no one really knows if it works, but a lot of people are using it. Oh, yeah, no, he fully just took his... Yeah, big sock. ...sock foot out of his... Different socks, though, than... Ow. Yeah, it looks like normal socks, almost. Yeah. What does Team Japan know that we don't? Well, I was really excited. I thought that it was all about the toeless socks. Maybe I'll have to try. I've never tried before. <laughs> I, I've seen them, and so many of the Japanese do it. Maybe that's why I'm not climbing so hard. There we go. Look, <laughs> sock sponsors. You too. Of Alana. Exactly. <laughs> we Hit should try up. it. <laughs> Give it a go. The gear test coming up. So, liquid chalk on. He's almost ready to get going here. Tony Yoshida. Oh, in our commentary booth, it's starting to get a little bit windy and rainy. I can start to feel some water. This is probably not good with the communication equipment around us. Yeah, if we suddenly go off air, you'll know what's happening. Yeah. Just a forewarning. So, so Tony Yoshida is about to get underway. The clock will start ticking when he pulls onto the wall. The cameraman are there. He's eyeing up this jump. A little run and jump and a skip, and he's up. So we know the bottom of this route well now. No one yet coming to that first jump. Mm -hmm. It's looked pretty chill for all of them. Pretty comfortable. I'm sure it's still very hard, just FYI. Oh yeah, I mean, when the route set say to me it's easy, they then immediately go, well, it's not easy, but it's easy for them. <laughs> yeah. It's easy because all of these guys climb 9A or, or more. More. More than 9A, yeah. probably. So it looks like he's going to do this toe hook method. Yeah. Hey, you do swing a lot more. Yeah. That was more like Lido Hume. So makes the low clip and we'll recover here, chalk up, before heading out to the right. Such a hard balancing act for the root setters is because they would have wanted some of the men to get in. And we've still got time, obviously, for them to get into the head wall. But you don't want to undercook it and get everyone there. It's, just, it's a very fine balancing act, this one. Yeah. Yeah, root setting is a very difficult job. But personally, they've gotten good separation on this. And personally, I prefer to see a harder route than a one that's too easy. I think it's really interesting. And here, yes, it's very clearly very hard but we've seen every climber do something different and that is very interesting to me i think that shows our sport amazingly that's that's what you want to see yeah you want to see them fighting out there and everybody doing the same moves in slightly different ways that work for them i, I love that so he's coming up towards Sorry, ravi andy's score here this is the awkward draw he's clipping it in an awkward way Gets in though, that looked good. <laughs> Trying to find a heel on top of that volume. Oh, okay, good, okay. Makes the bump up. Yeah, it's funny, some of the athletes like the heel on the volume, but it didn't look super solid. No, it didn't really make much of an attempt to match where his hand was either. Kind of wanted to put it almost above. Slot down into it. Right, this is where he needs to recover something because we know how hard this next series of moves are. That's the crimp you can see on your screen in the middle, the blue hole. And there's a lot of chalk around it where they've slapped near it. Yeah, you can barely see it because of how small it is. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you squint, it's there. I think it's, it's not just a crimp, it's a slopey crimp, a tiny slopey crimp. doesn't make it. So that's no medal for him. And he's outside. Sebastian Helenke is still in a medal position. Well, he is. Yeah. Well, yeah, he has, the truth. So Heidi Masa Nishida is the final athlete out. He'll climb in a minute. He'll be the last male athlete out onto the stage. Oh. Ah, 
looking up at the root, wondering what went wrong. It's worth, so you know, if you're in a gym and you fall on a move, you can go back and do it again. With this, it's gone forever. That's it. You know? Yeah. Nobody ever gets to try these roots again. I can't remember who it was. Another co-commentator of mine was telling me that, that that's what it's half the joy of it is that you get to do something that's never been climbed before and you get to have a go at it. And that's really good. But also, you, you never get to do it again. You know, it's gone and you have to move on from it. Yeah. I mean, it's totally different than outdoor climbing yeah. or climbing in a gym. I mean, a little more similar to climbing in a gym, when, but things are reset, but you still get usually four or six weeks on something. You get time for revenge on it, at least, usually. This oh. is, yeah, literally one shot and it's done. Well, that was his fall from the top, similar position to others. No medals for him here this evening. And a long look up at what could have been. Well, here he is, Hidemasa Nishidi. He won the gold at the FISU University Champs in Innsbruck. Since then, 27th in Copper, 20th in Edinburgh, and then smashing into the finals here in first place. But no World Cup medals, no. No World Cup medals. Okay. Yeah, medals for youth champs, but youth competitions. Yeah, he's really young. So he's underway now. Right foot on the screw. Let Jewel Tex hold in the right. Last chance to see this beater, which will he do? <laughs> kind of in two mind. Went for the crimp and then decided to go up and didn't quite have the reach on it. Yeah. Now taking a moment to rest. Oh. Very nervous jump. for him. Yeah, Team Japan look nervous there too. Ah, uh, easy eventually. Oh, nice. So, five minutes to climb this route. Looks down, checks the time. It's not been a problem so far. So, yeah, Edinburgh, a much longer route, and that's why we saw those timeouts, or almost timeouts. Yeah, the, the routes were. 10 to 15 moves longer than I would say a standard World Cup route. So yeah, that would be why we saw those those timeouts. And because the walls here are steeper, there's usually less places to stop and find a sneaky rest. <laughs> yeah, there aren't many for the men. Sort of positions they can take some of the weight off the arms. We know where they can really chill out on. N not on a 45 or 50 degree wall like this is. Yeah, and the athletes are very good at making like this position, for example, looks quite restful, but everything will be engaged in his body. You know, his abs will be tense. Yeah. And it's not as restful as he makes it look. Yeah, even in a position that you might have a really good heel hook or something, maybe it's a bit of a rest for your one hand, but yeah, the rest of your body, it's not a rest for it. your heel, you know, your entire leg. Absolutely not. It's actually quite stressful. All right, here we go. First of all, it's the conundrum of this clip. See yeah, oh. working out. Doesn't nobody else need that. Okay. He got it. And makes space to reach under him for the clip. Oh, that was a very smooth clip. I didn't even really see it go in. He has practiced. It's <laughs> definitely in his kitchen. I aspire to get to that level of long draw clipping one day. So the big <laughs> bump into the dish almost went too high on it. Just caught it. It's not much of a heel hook there either, on the left. Takes it away quickly, right, here we go. Last chance for one of the men to get to the Whoa. final part. That was a crazy position. <laughs> yeah, when you look at that right heel, <laughs> the position of his leg. Yeah. Here we go. Left hand in the good pocket. There's a thumb on the screw on in that. Presses out. So far, he's keeping his feet in. So we're going to do a slow beta. Yep. Oh. A bit rushed through. Well, there we go. And Sebastian Halenka does pick up that bronze medal in the end. So that's our top three. Here, Higuchi in second. Oh. oh. 
There's a big boo from the crowd there. I'm not quite sure what's happening. Uh, maybe we missed something there on the camera. There was a big, big boo came from the crowd. I think you might be able to hear that on the speakers. Yeah, I really don't know what's going on. Well, if we know, we'll let you know. So he leaves the stage. So the men's final is done. And we'll move on to the women's in a minute. No one managing to get into the head wall where things combine at the top. And the men's comp is done. So we have our medalists. And this was the start of his route. The run and jump double hands up. And Lana, in a few minutes, you'll be going and interviewing the winner. Excellent. And this was his slip. Jumped out, looked in control until that moment. Oh. Right, Alana's going to head off to go and interview our winner. I'll see her in a couple of minutes while we look at some more of the action. So he leaves the stage. And that's the end of the men's comp. A shame we didn't see anyone on the joint sequence at the top of the wall, but the women will have a crack at it in a minute. Let's have a look at the results. Ao Yurikuza takes the gold medal here this evening. Fantastic from him, walking away with that. His best performance was second in Innsbruck, so new PB for him. Then Mashihiro Higuchi takes silver. Sebastian Helenke with the bronze medal, that third place finish, and he's going to be absolutely over the moon at that. 28 the score, count back deciding the results there. A lot of athletes falling around that same point, that 27 plus the 28, the real crux for the men's route, no one working out the sequence through then. Sebastian Helenke actually probably looked like he was onto something before he fell with the feet working its way across. A small pause here where we get everything arranged. Alana's going to interview out in a minute. And then we move on to the women. The women's results is a bit more closed off. Yanya Garnbrett has taken the overall title already this year. So that's sewn up for her. Jianso in second place as well. Shida won gold in Briançon 2019. Not his first gold, as I think I said. But another one to add to the collection. So good work from him. Darkness. It's really, it's an exciting venue to walk into. You walk along the roads here and they've shut all the roads on the way in. And the stadium just reveals itself. It's lit up, the spotlights dancing around and then the lights from the skyscrapers around us shining out. You can just about, if you look up, see people standing in the windows looking down at us. Probably wondering what on earth is going on. Climbing is here to stay in Indonesia. The first World Cup here. It was originally scheduled for Bali. We we're going to have a speed comp there and then things changed. Ended up in Jakarta and we're coming back here next year as well for another speed World Cup. Another one to look forward to. So right now, everything is getting set up for the women's competition. Eight of the best will compete. And you'll notice a few of the men were missing. We didn't have uh, Adam Ondra, for example. Colin Duffy wasn't here. Some people deciding at this point in the season to take a step back. A lot of people getting ready for the combined event. Well, Alana's all ready with Al down at the front. So let's head over to her and find out his thoughts. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, your first World Cup win. Yes. How do you feel? Uh, I'm very, very happy. Um, I can't believe this result. But I, I want to just say thank you for my family. That's amazing. How did you like the route? Uh, I like this route, but... Uh, it is very wet because it re uh, rain. So, uh, but I did my best. 
Yeah, it was an amazing performance. And what do you think about sharing the top section of the route with the women? Do you like that or do you not like that? Uh, uh, it is very good, but I had that thing. Uh, I think the route uh, pass part and middle part become difficult. So uh, I uh, I I decide use my power before the uh, last part. Uh, I understand. Yeah. So maybe a little bit easier, and then you could have actually tried the top part. Okay, thank you. Congratulations again. Thank you. Well, good to hear Al's thoughts there. And as he said, perhaps conditions proving to be hard out there on the wall. That rain maybe making things slippier than even we thought. Well, let's watch some of these highlights, shall we? Doyan Lee was first out, launching his way through. The first to show us really how hard that crux was. And then the rain started to fall, making things even harder. Luca Potija wraps up the overall, we think. We'll wait for confirmation on that. A bit of disappointment not to get another medal for him, but the tricky route. And then the hometown hero, Rami Andy Ramadan. Did himself proud here. An incredible semi-finals performance for him to get this far. And then another good one from him. One to watch out for in the future, and the Indonesian team, while well, we all think they're all about speed, no longer. Pretty handy lead climbers in there. Sebastian Alenke walks away with the bronze medal this evening. That drop-down move that got Alana scared. Good work with the feet before cutting loose. Couldn't quite figure out, piece together that sequence, skimming the floor on the way down. Bow to the audience, Masahiro Higuchi running up the wall at the beginning. Flying through, it looked like he was on for a second. One more micro adjustment though, sent it back down to the ground. Not enough here this evening. And then that man, we just heard from him. Tonight's winner, the rain fell. Didn't matter for him. Oh. Left hand pop. So, Alana, you spoke to Al, he mentioned the conditions, so perhaps more slippery than even we thought it was out there on the wall. Yeah, it sounded like it. Yeah, that rain might have played a part in it. Hidimasa at the end there. So, the women are up. Vita Lucan on stage. So consistent this year, really impressive from her throughout the season. And we just missed uh, Mia Crample being announced as well, just before her. Next up, Ro Nakagawa. Also been in quite a few finals this year. Yeah, she's in good form. As has Natsuki. And Laura Rogera, she came early to Jakarta to acclimatize. She came to the gym and another one who was just mopped the second she walked into the gym. <laughs> Two, three civilians in the final. There's the last one. Yanya Gambra out onto the stage. She didn't top out the route, was a little disappointed, but these things happen. It was a bit of a slip of the feet and she went to the final hold. Yeah, she kind of maybe tried to match feet instead of just cross through. I'm Anna. sure she won't make it a mistake like that. <laughs> Absolutely not. Hannah Moyle, her first lead final. Seen her in quite a few Boulder finals this year, but first time she's in the lead. Jan So will be climbing last here this evening. She was along with, uh, Ma uh, finished the route as well as Hannah did, but she did count back. That's why she's climbing in last position. So as their shadows bounce off the back wall, they'll leave the stage. Their observation period was earlier on. Vita Luka taking the jacket off as she was walking out there. I think the athletes have a, a certain jacket that they have to be presented in or for the podium. So even when it's this hot, it's, you know, 25, 30 degrees Celsius right now after the rain, they still have to wear a, a thick cotton hoodie. 
Yeah, it's got to be hot out there. Well, this was the observation from earlier on this evening. Same time as the men. That air climbing routine everyone goes through. Two women there, similar heights. Could be why they're reading it together. And then Yanya and Vita together. I was going to say, it's nice to see a German and a Japanese yeah. reading together. Usually, but they only stick to their sort of own country more. It could be a height. I mean, that shot made them look very yes. similar heights. Yeah. So yeah, they are both quite tall. It does change things a bit. Mia Crample looking at the first. You can touch the first couple of holds. Can't pull off the ground. So that was their observation that took place earlier. The crowd of which keep coming in and out depending on how the rain has <laughs> sort of filtered back into the stadium now. Well, we're close to our start now. Seconds away, our drone rotates around the stadium. And you can see what I meant by a spectacular place to go climbing. <laughs> it's so cool from that angle, doesn't it? It looks so small. <laughs> yeah. Well, you realise you think a lead wall is big until you see the buildings next to it. You yeah. Think, oh. Well, that's our top eight. Mia Cramble will be out onto the mats, first of all. Vita Lukin, Ryu Nakagawa, Natsuki Tani, Laura Rogara, Yanya Gabre, Hannah Moyle, Chen So finishes things up. That is our final eight athletes of the year, because this is our last World Cup. So it is. It's gone quickly, hasn't it? Yeah. And for the have we have you spoken about the women's overall title? No, already? I did mention it. So Yanya take, has taken it and Chen So has uh, come second. So that's kind of decided already at right. this point. So Yanya is the winner. I, Mori, coming late into the season. Yes. Koppa was the first time we saw her. Yeah, she has only done two and won two. Yeah, <laughs> so, and we have, before that, we haven't seen her since 2019. Yes. So a long break. I mean, there was COVID. Yeah. Especially Japan had really strict COVID regulations. Yeah. Hard to get in and out, I think. Yeah, exactly. So we're a couple of minutes away now. Our lead wall lit up. The speed wall's on the left. That was on Friday. No, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday yeah. was the lead final. So speed finals. And go and watch that. Especially the men's big final was incredibly <laughs> close. It was really good. Colonel Katabin, I, I honestly think he could have got a world record. He slipped, but it was on a fly of a run. Oh, that would have been so cool. Because, that, I mean, if it was a world record, it would have been sub five. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait until that happens, so that's going to be very exciting. Yeah, we'll have to wait for next year, though. One at home in Indonesia would have been cool. Oh, yeah, Mia Krampel's wearing two different shoes. Well, why, why is that? Because you see it in bouldering a lot when they change, you know, sort of mid-boulder. But So she's obviously made the decision coming into this final that's the way to go. Yeah, maybe one of them is better for heel hooks, stays on her foot better, and she sees a lot of heel hooks on that foot. But it, uh, those shoes are fairly similar I now have to see yeah I'm not sure it could also just be that maybe she likes the say the drago is the one on her right foot better but the left one broke earlier or something like yeah that. sure I'm not sure or maybe an injury or something or like a bunion <laughs> yes <laughs> and so that one's like slightly bigger yeah yeah so the beginning of this women's route is pretty straightforward there is a jump coming up here though that's quite a long way on the screen. Oh, just gets it. That oh. right hand looked like it was peeling off for a sec. Yeah. For she's a second, I thought she was just going to try to go one-handed. Yeah. And then she's safely through. Then gets a high foot, swaps the feet. There's not much of a nubbin down there, but it's something to stand on. <laughs> then gets the heels in. So the women's route is a bit more direct than the men's is. Still got a twist in the middle, a snake from right to left. One of the heel hooks, perhaps. That's why she chose those shoes. Mm. And obviously our leaderboard clear at the moment because she's the first athlete out. Such a shame we didn't get to see any men on the top of that wall, but hopefully the women will show us what could have been. Into the pockets now. Do athletes have a choice finger when you're putting your fingers in these pockets? Like back two or, or, or front two, is that something that happens? So when you're climbing, for example, do you choose the same fingers or does it depend on the hold? D depends on the hold. Uh, I'm not amazing at pockets, but I'll often try both of them. Uh, 
and see what just feels better in the moment. Because I know there's been times where I like either, ooh, I like this press right in the middle. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, looks a bit awkward, though. Blind ooh. on the feet. Yeah. The clip hitting you in the shoulder. <laughs> yeah, reminding you it's there. Yeah. What do you like, back two or front two? I am a solid front two person. Okay, ba yeah. My back two are weak. That's interesting because most people have, say, because they share the same tendon, they're, they're stronger. Yeah. So Mia now on the crimps. Approaching the head wall, she's done really well. Oh, big bump up to the right hand crimp. And then more pockets to come. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, very pocky route. Yeah, very similar kind of sequence to the lower pockets. Three fingers in these, stacking them a little bit. Crossing, yeah. Ooh. Around the rope there, a little bit awkward. Yeah, it looks different up here. It looks like a very old school route. The holds are so small rather than big holds on volumes. I quite like it. The lover of dirty <laughs> Throwback. <laughs> yeah. So now she's about to enter what would have been the shared part of this route. <laughs> and as I'm saying this, I'm looking at the spotlights and rain is starting to fall again. Okay, out Ooh. to the first crimp, bumps to the left. All right, and our first look at the head wall. Yeah, this is it. So this is where the men would have joined it as well. The audience are enjoying the first look at this. <laughs> Quick climbing from here as well. She's got two minutes 23 on the head wall. Awkward match with the feet. Crosses onto the slope as well. Oh. Very slopey looking. Yeah, these are, I said there weren't many tick marks, but these are tick marks. Oh, but they are slopey, aren't they? She nailed the first one, slips on the second one. Mia Crample, though, high on the wall. Yeah, good fight. Yeah. That's exciting. Good start from her. Yeah, that left one looks hard to get to with your body position. You've got to come right into it and be precise at the same time. With not great feet. They're not right under you. They're not facing the right direction. So Mia, to have a performance like that after she almost didn't make finals, it was only a last minute appeal that snuck her in. I actually didn't realize I went to go, I gave her a hug and said, oh, I'm so sorry, Mia. And she was like, no, they just appealed. I'm in. <laughs> Yeah, the appeal process is a bit of a mystery to some people watching, but coaches and athletes can appeal. You can you can say you've noticed something or without another athlete or your own athlete, and then the judges go back, they look at all the angles on the cameras, and then they make a decision from there. Mm -hmm. So I think what had happened is the judges gave Mia a, a solid score, and then they appealed to say that Mia actually got a plus movement, positive movement in the direction of the route. And they accepted that, gave her the plus, and that put her in finals. Yeah, it's part. Of, it's the job of the coaches is to spot these things. And it's, if you have a big coaching team, it can help. You've got lots of coaches looking at different angles, trying to spot things and work it out. It's almost part of the game yeah. of climbing. Yeah. Sometimes some teams have multiple coaches. They're trying to watch everyone, or we just have one Malik, and he can somehow watch everything at the same time. <laughs> Talented. <laughs> one Malik. I like that. So Vita Lucan is out and about. She's had a good season, consistently in the top 20. 14th in Edinburgh, 10th in Copper. Just missing finals though, almost every single time, unfortunately. Yeah, so it's good to see her back here. She's had a few unlucky instances in semi-finals. Yes, that's right. Be right on the cusp, I have to put that frustration on the back burner, keep on training, keep pushing. And here comes the first dodgy moment, the jump. Right hand, left hand. He's, it's more awkward than it looks like, a bit around the corner of that left hand, and you get to it second. Yeah. Bumps up to the slopers, and this is where the, the slippery conditions out here start to get to you a bit. You've got to grip a little harder. I'm not sure if there is a jib on that one. No, it didn't look like it. So a few men peeling off the top of the semi-final route because of that slippiness. Yes. And even Vita, her foot slipped. It's funny how a hole can be that big and yet still be hard to hold. You know, it's <laughs> if you're not a climber, it seems a bit obtuse, but it it makes sense because it's 
it's, it's hard to hold and it's uh, overhanging. So the first of the pockets and it's old school roots as we decided to call it. That crimp's really horrible which she's standing on because it's right by the metal coping and if you put a foot on the slippy bit, Ooh. it's not the best of ideas. Yeah, be really precise with your toe there. So bumping that left hand up, camper style. Oh yeah, she's very extended here. Yeah, she's stretched out. Oh, nice. That's a very Vita Lucan-esque move, that. <laughs> Remember the press, I mean, oh, now it comes, but there's a different way of getting into it for Vita. Oh, almost the same. I yeah, think. it's yeah. Very, very similar. And that press, I mean, how it looks painful with the shoulder. Is it as painful as it looks, or is it quite restful? No, it's quite restful, because she's not using any muscle here, if that makes sense. Like, she's just pressing, like, her arm's completely straight and locked out, so it's actually quite a comfortable position once you're in it. Sometimes getting into them and coming out of them can be a little finicky. <laughs> Definitely balancey to get out of them, usually, especially because you can see she's on fairly small crimps. No problem for her. Yeah, good use of drop knees throughout. Yeah, Vita's quite good at drop knees. You'll see her do those crazy over drop knees where her knee is actually twisted and pointing towards the ground <laughs> quite often. Right, so she, the same way as me, drops back down to re chalk up. I guess that pocket isn't quite as good as it looks on camera, maybe. And you've got to commit because the second you start moving off it, you're, you're fully into it. Double bump into the crimp, and she's going to get towards the head wall as well now. Feet almost in the men's route on the left. <laughs> so she's framed by the spotlight. It's followed her all the way up the wall. Let's see what she can do with all these slopers up here. Right, locks off the crimp now. Sliding. Oh, yeah. oh, this looks awkward. Oh, I <laughs> thought she was gone there. Yes, for <laughs> sure I thought she was gone. Right hand. This is <gasps> where Mia was. <gasps> so that's going to be less than Mia Crample score. That one, 34 plus, she should get there. All right, so both women towards the same place. Yeah, that left foot skating on the wall. That was, that yeah. was a moment. But she sort of found the edge of that big turquoise volume slash not volume, like we called it before, because it's uh, it's not the same angle as the head wall. It's actually come out a little bit more. It's a little bit slabby. Yeah, it is slabby. And it, it's caused a few problems because the root setters don't want athletes to hit it on the way down. Yeah. Yeah, so you have to be careful with the draw positioning and the root positioning when you're setting. So that was the first leap. Did it well. And then from then on, it's just maintaining, managing it. She dropped back down. Look at the focus on Vita's face there. Love that shot. And then up with the right hand and then just sliding off it all the way. Yeah. Could be a little bit greasy up there. Stop raining, though, once again. It's the theme of the night. Yeah, it's it raining. Out. Stops, I, think, raining stops. I think it might have gone away. That's, that's what I reckon. It's looking clearer up there from the night sky. Okay, third athlete out, Ryo Nakagawa. Onto the stage to join us. Fourth in Edinburgh. So on a run of finals. Copper, she was outside in 13th. And you forget, yeah, she was competing in Dallas as well for the youth where she got a silver medal. So she's done everything. The air miles she's racked up. Yeah, very busy end of summer for her. Yeah. So she's got two protectors on, that's what she's sliding off there. A bit like what you'd take into a very posh house if you didn't want to scrape the floor. <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way of describing that. It's the only one that popped into my head. It's basically like if you put a pair of socks over your shoes. Yes, that's better. <laughs> right, so easy through this bit. Just be careful with the feet. The warm-up wall for the athletes is in the isolation area, which is way to the left of the stadium. Yeah, it's maybe 
hundred meters away. Yeah. And air conditioning there, so it's, it's oh, a bit cooler. Lovely, yeah. And there was a paddling pool that no one seemed to be using. Did you see anyone in the paddling pool? It was not a paddling pool, we asked. It was a storage facility for the ice. Oh, fine. I, yeah. I thought it was a paddling pool. Yeah, my coach pointed out that if we all went in the paddling pool, it would be disgusting. <laughs> True. <laughs> We're very sweaty here. It's very warm. Oh, wow. She, she's crimping the metal part, of protector on that oh, volume yeah. part of the wall. I've never seen anyone do that. No. I, granted, this wall has been used for just two World Cups. True. <laughs> True. But holding on to that, I've seen people stand. I can't remember where it was. It was coping along, I think it was Innsbruck. You know where where the head will meet the overhead. Yes. I've seen people stand on that, but uh. never crimp it. Right, up she goes into the slopey dish. Uh. The clock, by the way, we're working on that. We'll let you know if it becomes an issue, but time certainly hasn't been a factor so far for anyone, but we're trying to get it sorted for you. So left heel up on the dish. It's a bit of a slow burn of this women's final. We know where it's going to get hard, and it's just kind of... It, it's efficiency at this point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's a little bit different. It doesn't seem... Um, unlike the men's route, it seemed like there were places that people were doing things differently. There's not so much of that. I'm, this is the third climber, but... <laughs> yeah, of course. But yeah, the, 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 it's, it's easier to read, I think, from the men's one. Yes. Yeah. Nothing too tricky. Right, so she gets the clip in though, into the pockets with the left, leaning back on that arm in order to rest, using your back muscles as well as the arms. She's resting her way up through this nicely, taking her time. Drops back down, checks the clock. You wonder if those pit pockets would get more greasy or whether they'd be a bit protected from the conditions by being a sinking in. I don't think there's actually rain falling directly on them, so I don't think they'll get any more or less greasy yeah. than the rest. It's just the air, the humidity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got a clock back. Thank you, guys. So 427. Nice. Yeah, she seems to be climbing a little bit slower, but still very quickly. I mean, she's she's got plenty know, of time. Two thirds she? of the way up, and yeah. she's less than two thirds. Of her time is gone. Less. Yeah, being careful with this. You don't want to drop it down low. She'll have an idea from the time she came on that athletes are getting high up on this. Yeah, you can tell when you're sitting behind the wall and you're sitting there for quite a long time. Like, oh, okay. How, I always want to ask that. How? Uh, I'll ask it in a sec, actually. I'll hold that question. Mm. It's a good one, I promise. So into the pockets again. Everyone else has reached through with the right pocket and then drop back down they probably realize they're good enough to rest on and they might not get another rest before the head wall oh no not Ryu yeah Ryu comes she's not underneath. tired <laughs> no she's not at all immediately through Ryu does have that endurance oh, that stamina drops onto the men's route oh yeah oh yeah a tiny bit <gasps> oh, oh the drops no. the crimp so Ryu is down 29 for her So that's going to be interesting. We're only four in, though, but we know that there's potential to go further. Yeah, I was going to ask, how are you guys warming up right up to the point? When do you stop warming up? And how do you balance? How do you judge that moment? I think I stop a lot earlier than some other people, and I definitely don't warm up as much as other people. But for me, I like to have at least a half hour rest. Okay. I mean, if you think about, for me, when I go outdoor climbing and I'm climbing something really hard, I will often take much more than a half hour rest in between burns of a, a very hard route, maybe hours even. You know, you're kind of, when you're outside, you're belaying somebody and then you sit down for lunch or whatever. So you're not running super hot. So these athletes won't have like climbed seconds before. It's oh no, they'll probably, I think the minimum time that somebody would take would be like 15 minutes, but most athletes would be more like, yeah, 20 to 30. Right, I think well. I had 45 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Natsuki Tani is out. Trying to make a play for the podium places. 13th in Edinburgh. Sorry, not 13th in Edinburgh. 4th in Edinburgh. 
So nearly made a podium. Can she get revenge, get one better this time? She'd love a medal here. Yeah, she's had, she's had a good year. Yeah, she was another competing in Dallas as well, so a busy end to her summer. Another medal there too, silver for her. It's incredible to see these athletes who are competing at the highest level on the senior circuit go to the junior, <laughs> to the youth circuit. It's almost a bit unfair, I think. It should be a rule. If you win a medal, if you get high enough up in the seniors, <laughs> no more youth for you. But a lot of them are just, it's, it's such a difficult transition from that youth circuit into the senior circuit. For some people, definitely. Alberto Hines Lopez competed a long time in the youth as well as the senior, just to get as much experience as possible. Mm -hmm. Did you see the bat there come across the stage? <laughs> I was wondering what that was. Yeah, there's a lot of bats around this stadium. Oh, really? Yeah. And I saw one fly straight across. So Natsuki Tani eyes up the jump. And she uses the ah. edging as well. Well, she would have. Oh, she's staticking it. So did we. Oh, did, okay, she's fully static, yeah. yeah. But she's a little bit shorter, so yes. I'm not, it's not going to be a harder static move here. Gets the heel, reaches Ooh, back. That's not a good hold. No, I think she might have to rethink this a bit. Uh -oh. yeah, she would probably have to jump. Oh, you can oh, see the thinking. Gonna be hard. She's going to have to match no, it, but gets kidding. it in, yeah. It wasn't hard. But, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't hard, but it... it yeah, I mean, you got Definitely burned energy. Yeah. Going up and down. Because maybe a jump would have been more efficient through that for her. Yeah. I don't, I don't, don't think she's particularly strong at jumping it, it might have just been more stressful than it was worth for her okay, I've got nothing worse than holding a metal <laughs> hold in my hands that sounds as stressful to me yeah yeah not a huge fan of this wall with <laughs> that metal thing you can grab now that we've seen and then the slab at the top yeah it's got it's got character put it like that it's beautiful <laughs> don't get me wrong but yeah there's, there's a couple of odd things with it yeah so drop knee underneath reaches under to get the clip and now into those pockets that are good. Easily three fingers in there. And then this press sequence, that big hold sticking out from the wall, the fin-like feature on her right. That's where she'll aim for next. I like these holds. They're cool. Oh, whoa. Oh, a big wrap. Oh, nope. Didn't like that. It's going to jump for this one. Oh, no. Yeah, had it. Some really unique beta going on there. Wraps it all the way around. Team Japan focused on the wall, up at their athlete. She's quite short, too, so when she gets her hand wrapped over, she doesn't have a so much room to wind up for the jump. Oh, oh no. she does fall down low, head in her hands. So that's going to be not enough for the podium places. She looks devastated as she came down there. She knows for sure that the others got higher because it took so long. Oh. Yeah, there was a lot going on. That, that wrap, it just seemed to sort of throw her a bit when she couldn't get it in the first time. Yeah. And then down low, of course, she had that moment on the jump where she was reaching out, and all that can start to tick over in your head and affect you. Mm -hmm. Well, end of her comp for this evening. I haven't seen the full registration list for Tokyo. It's not everyone that's coming Marioka? to that. Yeah, sorry, Morioko, not Tokyo yet. <laughs> it's quite far from Tokyo. It is a two-hour train journey. I'm saying that because I'm flying into Tokyo, so in my head it's Tokyo. Yeah, but yeah it's a two-hour train journey up the country north. And I also know from experience it's an eight-hour drive. Okay. Yeah, that's where we stayed for the Olympics, oh, okay. me and Sean. And uh, it's like Sean and I. You have to give me some tips for where to go. Uh, I only saw the hotel room. Oh, yes, of course, because <laughs> the quarantine, wasn't it? It was a lovely hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've been talking a lot about the difficult conditions out there, and we actually talked to one of the route setters about this earlier on in the week to find out a bit more. So let's discover that, shall we? This is Rindy. He's part of the IFSC route setting team and an ex-Indonesian athlete. Rindy, I wanted to talk to you about conditions because we've just come from Edinburgh, one of the 
maybe coldest places we could climb at to one of the sweatiest, hottest places. What are the challenges for the athletes competing? Yeah, so in this condition in Indonesia, very hot and the high humidity in here. So this is the challenging for the competitor. I think this the, the maybe not good for condition and the wet for the for climber for lead and then he's slippery like so many sweat in here. So maybe please to prepare for the bad condition in here and welcome to Indonesia. <laughs> well, thank you for having us. Yes. Although it's hot now, the last couple of days it has poured with rain. Yes. So we're in the rainy season. Yes. Again, that's another thing that the route setters and the athletes have to consider. Yeah. But in this condition, maybe for our can be to prepare for this, for rainy and for the, this condition. But for the wall, I think it's okay. okay. Yeah. So that will be protected, it's sheltered from the rain? Yeah. Because the rain is, maybe if the rain is direction like this, maybe we can stop, but if the rain is not money, we can continue this. Okay, okay. that's good to know. Yeah. And finally, how much do you guys as route setters think about these hot conditions when you're setting the routes? Do you make it a little bit easier to compensate for that? Yeah, for me and the team and the, the chief route setter, he say, with, when are we setting, setting the route, you say more, more be easy because the condition is not good and for the arc climber maybe he feel not not too good like this. So maybe uh, more lower and then then like this. Yeah. Well, whatever happens, I can't wait to see the results of it. So uh, best of luck to you guys and good luck to the athletes. It is hot. Well, there we go. That was our chat with the root setters. Alana, you are interested in root setting. It's something you've talked to me about doing. Yeah. How do you get into the root setting game? Uh, it's a bit strange. Often, in, in most places, I think still, it's a bit of a quote-unquote old, old boys club. You kind of got to know somebody or ask at your gym. And if they know you climb, sometimes they'll allow you to, to start root setting. And then sometimes some places have root setting training programs. You know, you could ask your gym if you're interested, ask around, see if there's any in your area. Yeah, there are ways into it. So do go and do that if you're interested in it. It's a good part of the sport. So Laura Rogera is up, <laughs> being spotted as always <laughs> on the stage. Right, she's underway. And she's gonna find this route. I mean, there aren't, the jump is going to be interesting for her. I know we talk about her not loving the jumps as much, but it's something she's worked really hard at getting better at. Yeah, this year I feel like she's been committing fast and well to things. But I think she might oh, try to no, do this she's method. seen the, yeah. Oh, cruising that. Up with the left, oh, locks yeah. off that shoulder. Same beta as Natsuki, but she committed right away to it. Natsuki wasn't really that comfortable down here, and it really shows, it's quite obvious when we see the two close together. Yeah. Laura looking relaxed here as she rests on the wall. That's the scoreboard. I mean, Titani's score of 19 plus. And about those big volumes. We're actually seeing pretty good separation here at the moment. I was worried for a set we'd see everyone up on the head wall falling in the same place, but it hasn't quite worked out like that yeah. so far. Yeah, Mia and Vita just climbed amazingly. Yeah, this is the thing, when someone comes out, first of all, the temptation is to go, oh, it, it's too easy or something. <laughs> and then so often these, these athletes are all at a similar kind of level and it can change up yeah. and down. It's not like whoever climbs first is by far the worst climber. No, no, definitely not. So Lara's into the pockets. A little breath to herself there. That's a good crimp she's standing on. Sticks out from that metal coping. You still have to be careful on it. Resting her way through this. Four minutes on the clock. No one getting near to times out. You start to think if the remember count back can be important so Yanya really needs to top this route if she wants the victory here this evening and nobody else and no one else yeah. well Hana and Cheyun can not top the route if Yanya is to win yeah so there's me in the back of her mind but they're coming up in a bit after Laura now this is where Natsuki was wrapping her leg 
eyes up this shouldery move, gets it nicely. Nice. Yeah, the commitment's so much better from her on those moves. Yeah. Now you are allowed to touch quick draw like that. You can't wait it, but you're allowed to move it around. <laughs> Lisa looking serious. So this is where there's the final pockets and then the red head wall. Coming up towards the logo on the right to finish things off with a jump at the top off the crimps. Laura onto the crimps shows how small they are with that shot. She's managed to lock it off, wrapping the thumb over the top of the fingers. She's pretty good at crimping. Yeah, she is. I've seen some of the crimps she holds onto. It's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. And a, a route like this kind of suits her style, actually. These nasty crimps in between these moves. And now she'll love this next section. If she likes crimps, it's all crimps for the next couple of moves. Yeah, she could just get a good little sh shake out here on these pockets. And <laughs> Laura resting as well. Below the head wall. Gets vertical up there. Or slightly off vertical. And now crosses through with the right. Oh, well, she's bolt hanger by her feet makes me so nervous. That's yeah, right there, isn't it? Don't touch it. She should yeah. see it, but still. Oh, uh, she's she's good. She's chill. She doesn't go down to the men's route. Continues up, and this is the joining point. Oh, a bit Ooh. of rope drag going on there. Yeah. Or the B layer, maybe for a second, not giving enough slack. Or it could just be that she's pulling rope and she's so high. The rope is not straight up anymore. So where the root is gone. Yeah, and he held her back for a sec, though. Ooh, Ooh. reached up to the sloper. Yeah, that would be hard to grab that sloper in that direction. Sure. Yeah, she's got to bring the right Ooh. hand into it. Does now the fight clear on Lara's face. <laughs> Oh. oh, just. Oh. oh, she's still got the toes down onto yeah. the right crimp. Oh, but a way better position than I think. Oh, oh slides no. off it. Yeah, it's not very crimpy, that. It's it's a sloper. It's just a, a little screw on sloper on top yeah. of that thing. A sloper on top of a sloper. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit mean, isn't uh, it? A dual tech sloper on top of a big sloper. <laughs> Good fight from Laura up there. Yeah, very good. She's into the podium places at the moment. Three to go. Yanya Garnbrit, Hannah Moyle, Jan So coming up. She'll go and join the fellow athletes on the side of the stage. You get to watch the rest of it. That is the route setters down there, in fact. They're watching all the action. Gentleman in the white shirt's one of them. Saw him in the film earlier on. Yeah, they always get the best seats. We don't have a bad one, to be fair. The, yeah. We've got this TV screen good. and real life. It's it's all right. Yeah. And a nice big umbrella. Yeah. A true, and a big umbrella. We've been protected from the rain. It has gone away now. I think it's done for the evening. So this was Laura's... Don't jinx it. I won't. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, true. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> we hope it's gone for the evening. So, Laura, that was the drop on that right sloper. Went up, touched it, couldn't hold it, sliding off and down back to the ground. Well, a very popular climber is about to come onto the stage. We mentioned that she'd been signing autographs. Incessantly. Incessantly signing autographs. There were kids running around with pictures of her. Yanya Gambra is about to be announced through those curtains. There she is on the stage. And she has a bit of work to do here. She's got two good climbers coming up, both of who are above her in the standings, if they all top it out with count back. Mm -hmm. So all Yanya can do now is top the route. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's one of those things, I mean, she's not going to be thinking about that. All she has to do is climb and do it. Yeah. We get to analyze it all, but for her, her mind is going to be clearer. Straight forward down low, and Yanya is very good at adapting her style to suit the conditions and what she needs to do in different parts of the route. Oh, statically reaches out. That's really stretched out. Whoa. Oh, okay. Makes it work. Yeah. We haven't seen many jumps on this, have we? Mia and Luca both jumped. Vita. Vita, sorry. Both jumped. 
Yanis Stretch using all of her reach there to get it. Also, remember that her finger strength is... <laughs> <laughs> Would you say Yanis got the strongest fingers you've seen in the women's circuit? Ooh. I don't know. I, I think so. Like, just as a climber as a whole, she is the best. Yeah. For sure. The strongest, in my opinion, watching her climb. Yanya swings out towards the right now. She's using all of that finger strength on those crimps underneath the wall. Crimping underneath and then towards the pockets. Let's find out if she's feeling pockety here today. Three fingers in once again. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a feeling I've ever had. <laughs> feeling pockety, you should try it, it's great. <laughs> not sure my tendons like it so much, but... <laughs> no. Yeah, it's interesting because it is different, isn't it? Being good on pockets and being having strong fingers. I mean, they're similar, but they're different skills. You need to train both of them. Yeah. It's so much more intense when you're on a pocket with only two fingers. Obviously, you don't have those other couple fingers to help out. And yeah, much more open as well. You can't close it off as much. So if you're good at locking off crimps, it doesn't so much help you on those open pockets. Oh, Yanya with that Ooh. little bump up. Oh. Right, coming through to the right. Kicks the feet through. Good skills from her. She begins this press now. That draw just looks so awkward. It's always right in the face, isn't it? It's like right on her ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> but the press is really cool. I like the press a lot. Yeah, it's a good move. And restful, as Alana was telling us earlier. But Yanya doesn't in any way look pumped yet. Micro shakes out as she goes forward. Restful only for one arm, though. There's no way to match it, really. And you could, it would be just really awkward and horrible. Yes, yeah, so that left might be more recovered than the right. All right, up opposite. To the opposite, yeah. So right, up to the crimps and then pockets next. Straight into it, really precise climbing from Yanya so far. Little adjustment on that. Crosses over the top, some have been going under. Will she drop back down like the other half? She doesn't, not breathing too hard at the moment. No. Seems, Seems very relaxed right now. Sorry. Yeah, she does know. Total control is Yanya. But there's a hard sequence to come. After the hole that everyone's dropped, there's, it's not easy. You still have to work your way all the way around the next big red volume. Now the crowd start to pick up a little bit as Yanya nears the high point, fourth at the moment, coming towards the podium place. Crosses through, and this is where these slopers get nasty, nearly lost it with the feet. Had to kick out to the left and nails the first one. Right, it's all about this second move though. Can she bring the left oh, in? Oh, and now she's oh, easy. <laughs> it's like a different route. A couple more. Out with the right, locking off that shoulder. And this is where you have to work your way over to the left. Gets awkward. Whoa, that cross looks really awkward. And Very there, cool. There is a screw on. She's dancing her feet towards it, dropping down onto it. Nice. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, these crimps look so it's like weird. Big pebbles, isn't it? She's got a thumb involved, pressing up. Yeah, Whoa. it's all about the thumbs through here. One move away from topping out this route. One minute, 20 on the clock. Blows the chalk off her fingers. Brings the feet through, sets up. Nice. And that's a top for Yanya. Oh, she didn't top the semi-final route. Oh, hang on, she still hasn't finished off. Must quick the clip draw, she does. Oh, good work from Yanya. Well, she's back at topping routes. That was awesome. And straight to the top of the leaderboard. Well, game on then. Two athletes to go. Yanya's done what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. It's all down to Hana and Chihu. Yeah, this is it. Anamo Chihu up next. Oh, and they would have heard that backstage. They'll have heard the shout. They'll know Yanya's topped it. They'll know what they have to do. And I've seen a lot of discussions recently about that, about when athletes know that they need to top the route and what that does to them psychologically. Because it's different, isn't it, when you know you have to finish. Yes, but a good way to think about it is that it's possible. Yeah, true. So that gives you confidence then? Yeah. Okay. 
So this For was me, that's how I try. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I read, I can't remember who it was, but I was reading someone's post about it, how like it starts to get into your head and you think about it and you have to just let it go when you go out to the stage because yeah. I mean, it is what it is, isn't it? So this was the top for Yanya on those thumb scrags up there. Thumb what? Thumb scrags, you've never heard that? No. A very <laughs> British saying, perhaps, a thumb scrag. Yeah. <laughs> what do you call it in Canada? When you're using your thumbs. Thunderclink? A thunderclink, that's pretty, really? Thunderclink, yeah. That's so much better. <laughs> Actually, is it? I don't know. Find out, let me know. Thumb scrag or thunderclink? <laughs> you can vote. We can somehow, vote, yeah. I don't know how, but. I, I'm enjoying thunderclink. So, Hannah Moyle, her first lead finals, looking super chilled as well. Oh, yeah, I bet she's just so excited to climb tonight. Yeah. She's looking really good, really relaxed this weekend. She said she was battling with the heat and struggling with it a bit, but maybe has got more used to it as the week has progressed. Yeah, and hopefully tonight is a little bit better because obviously this morning would have been quite hot, but now is, is quite a bit cooler than, than it was earlier. So Hannah gets set up, springs, gets it. Nice. And obviously we know she can jump really well. She's really good at bouldering. Yeah, I remember in uh, yeah Innsbruck, she had those crazy jump sequence at the end. She's great at that. So yeah, committed to the jump, got it done, and moves fast through. Hannah hasn't topped out that many routes. In fact, I think her quali route was the first one she's topped out, and then she got another one in semis. So she's on this topping out <laughs> roll. It's a pretty good roll to be on. Yeah, it's good. Hannah going from strength to strength this season, really made herself a contender every World Cup. Rocks up on those crimps with, for the feet. Hands in the pockets. And we'll rest in this stretched out position. There's a few holes, those uh, footholds out to the left. I've sort of only really noticed them for the first time. One on the far left. I just wonder why that's there. That well, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, it's for this in. jump. Gets herself or static. Yeah, static. Yeah, she's got that reach, hasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Yanya also was able to static it, but m I think all the others jumped. Yeah, just a bit of a springboard there, and then this pressing move. <laughs> all the coaches no. very nervous. <laughs> With I mean, when you spend so much time with an athlete training them to get to this level, and then you have to sit back and just let them do it. <laughs> Wouldn't want that job. It is the worst. You're m way more stressed than the athlete themselves is. You know, the athlete can do something about their own fate, can't they? As a coach, <laughs> you just have to watch. Fingers crossed. So Hannah jumps up to the crimp. Drops into the first pocket. She's looking fresh at the moment. under really flowy climbing from Hannah. Shakes out, being precise now. Now she needs to unleash her crimp strength. Matches the feet, crossing under, climbing a little bit quicker. It's perhaps the pump goes. She hasn't even been on the wall for three whole minutes. Oh, so fast, Very isn't it? fast. Hannah cruising at the moment. Nice. She will jump above Yanya, remember, if she tops this out. Of course, she's got the tricky top crux to come. Oh. oh, oh. No. <gasps> oh. That move, every time someone does it, it looks scary. It yeah. looks like they're going to fall. Oh, oh, no, and a big slip down. That hold looks nasty up there. Oh, she was slightly to the left of it. Didn't get it 100% on. Yeah. And that's all it took. So Hannah won't top out, and but is inside of the podium places. Not guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah, she looked out. So she'll have a nervous last climb to watch. Yeah, but that guarantees me a medal right now. After, yeah, almost not making finals, like I mentioned earlier. So Mia Kramper, what a night she's having here in Jakarta. If you're just joining us, it's the end, coming up to the end of the competition here. My name is Matt Groom, and joined by Alana Yip here in the commentary box from Team Canada. We are on the last World Cup of the year. Last climber of the last, last World climber. Cup of the year. Oh, I'm getting sad now. It's <laughs> like the end of school. I want to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> we do come back for Japan, though, but it's a different kind of competition.
combined format with a tweaked scoring system. So don't worry, we haven't quite finished comp climbing yet. We're finishing the World Cup circuit. So here we go. Last climber. That's the offending hole. Look how bad this jewels. There's no text on the back of it as well. So if you go too far on it, you've missed it. Yeah. Those are usually feet. <laughs> and not good feet. <laughs> <laughs> What is wrong with root setters nowadays? <laughs> They've got their boxes mixed up. So mean. No. Jan So comes out then. Focused. What a season she is having in 2022. Multiple medals. Bronze in Edinburgh. Silver Briançon. Bronze in Chamonix. Just missing out in Coper too, right? She yeah. Just off the podium, fourth, I think? Yeah. Yeah, fourth and then a silver medal in Innsbruck. So glittering season for her. <laughs> and all she needs to do is finish this route and it will be gold due to count back. Long way to go though. Needs to make the jump first of all clean, save the energy through the pockets, work out the crimps on the head wall and then nail that awful handhold we just saw. So simple. Yeah, nothing really. Nothing, nothing to do. We can say so confidently sitting here under our beach umbrella. I know. <laughs> Where's the cocktail? <laughs> uh, no one's bought me one yet. Uh, she found the crimp on the side. I never would have seen that. No, definitely not something I would have thought to grab either. Obviously, they've all read it and seen it together. Thinking outside of the box. Yeah. So easily through what's sometimes a jump move. I was worried these holes would all filled up with chalk and slippery, but it doesn't seem to be the case. It's only eight climbers, it's not that many. No. I think in a semi-final, we were really seeing a build-up on some of the holes that was causing some problems. Mm. Is that why I fell off that hill? Yeah, that must be it. Uh, yeah. yeah. There was a moment that I thought you wouldn't be joining me in the commentary box. I was getting a bit <laughs> nervous. So, big drop knee and a twist to get into the pockets. Rocks up, no problem so far. Halfway through this route. Reaches up again. And yeah, that foot on the far left, swap the right onto it to make the jump. Ooh, ooh, ooh okay. He's going for the big jeep. No, jump, jeep, I always said that. <laughs> Cross under the quick draw, of course, hits her in the face. Clips it out of the way. <laughs> and now last few to go. This is where we start to find out how much endurance she's got for the top of the route. Yeah, looking good here, but everybody's looked pretty good here. Yeah, they have. Hannah especially looked really fresh until she dropped that slopey hold. Yanni Garmbrett watches on. She knows what this means if she tops it out. Mia Krampel, 35 plus, guaranteed a medal. Brilliant from her. Hannah Moyle not safe into the medals yet. Into the crimps now. It's a sketchy move to come with a feet skitter on that. Yeah. That the green. Sloper to sloper. Yeah. That looked every time it looks like the person is falling. Yeah, you, you, Hannah almost stretched it out. Yeah, but really, like, she put her foot up there and it came off in the same half of a second. That was yeah. so fast. All right, here we go. This is the sketchy move coming. She'll bring the right hand through first, then bump out towards the left. Here we go. Hold your breaths. Oh, puts the oh, foot right uh, in the hole. A Brooke Rabatou. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I think we can call that a Brooke Rabatou now. <laughs> She's the one who made it famous. Up, just oh. slides down onto it. And chalks up, right. She's looking solid. Right. So That's silver guaranteed for her and gold if she tops this route. Yeah, Hannah is pushed out of the top three. Crosses over. A lot of time left. Kicks out. Oh, Yanya dropped onto it. She kicks straight into it. Mm -hmm. And now 
the Thunderklings. <laughs> Final three holds before a jump to the top. All thinking about it. Oh, look at that thumb strength. Not something you say often. Oh, but she's dropping oh. back down. Yeah, Yanya had her entire palm on it. That looks nasty. Really oh does. My God. Oh, look at it, and it's slopey as well. Oh, okay. oh and then she pops. <gasps> so a pop means no gold medal for her. She'll have to settle for a silver. So Yanya takes yet another gold medal in a World Cup. Her 23rd lead win of her career and the overall world cup title but that was guaranteed already yeah for the second year in a row she won it last year as well awesome work was Jenso wow. came close so difficult i mean that's the margins on it isn't it just a little pop and she's gone and that was close to hold that slope I slid down onto it a little chalked up before Getting ready for the last sequence. It looks so in control coming up towards it. Let's look where that fall came. Yeah, that right hand pinged off. Yeah, those look I think really nasty. No text on it, maybe. I think it is, yeah. yeah. So they really want you to not, basically not use your hands, but just shift your body. Mm. So she just put a little bit too much weight through it. I That's so. what caused her to go down. Well, that is the end. An interesting final. And the Garrett, there are the results. Yanya Garnbrett. Gold medal with a top chance, so second silver for her. And Mia Crample picks up the bronze. Awesome performance from her. Now, Alana, you're going to go down and interview Yanya mm -hmm. once again down the bottom. <laughs> I think we're going to say goodbye or are you going to come back afterwards? Uh, I don't know. Up to you. Up to you. We'll either see you or not. But if you don't come back, thank you so much for all your work here this evening. Of course. We will see you in Japan for sure. But come yes. back and have a chat if you yeah, want. Yeah, I will. I will. You. Okay, cool. Well, you're going to head down to the front. I'll see you in a bit. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our final World Cup of the year is done and dusted. Didn't quite see the men and the women together on the head wall as we would have liked to see this new style of route, but a really unique idea and great to see something different here in a final. Brave route setting decisions by them. A tricky men's route underneath the volume and no one made it through onto the head wall. But the women, they got there. But the top had a sting in the tail caused quite a few problems for them in the top half of it. We saw low falls though. Tsukitani 19 plus never quite looked as comfortable on that. Ryu Nakagawa 29 plus. Vita Lukan 34. And you can see the 34 stacking up as Laura Rogera and Hannah Moyle fell in the same place. Then Mia Krampel got a little higher for that bronze. Chenso Silva with a 40. Looked like she was going to top it out but then the dual text pinch sent her back down. Yanya Garnbrett has come back from two silvers in a row, which for her would have been a disappointment to win her 23rd lead World Cup of her career. Can you imagine? <laughs> That's a stat beyond belief, really. Yanya Garnbrett so decorated. Awesome from her. Well, we're seconds away from the interview. Let's go to Yanya and Alana down at the front of the stage. Yanya, congratulations, first of all. And Thank you. how does it feel to be standing on the top step of the podium once again? It feels great to be back on the, on the, on the highest uh, podium. Um, yeah, definitely feels amazing. Um, even though today the roots were not, were not that hard, so it was basically all about making a mistake. Uh, so I feel bad for Seo because she climbed superb all, all weekend. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy with my win. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about this thing that the root setters tried today about sharing the top section of the root with the men? I really like it, actually. Um, I mean, I really like it because they can play a little bit more, um, like trying to make hard enough for the guys and hard enough for the girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this was actually the first time that it happened in a World Cup. Um, so I kind of like it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really cool as well. Do you think it could cause the beginning of the route to get too easy at all? Uh, you mean if, if, if we share the top yeah. part? Um, 
I feel like the whole competition, the first part of the routes were like up until the last part were a little bit too easy yeah. and then it got hard in the last part. Um, I think it, it does not happen with sharing the top. Uh, it didn't happen because of that, but just because it was like that. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand. Okay. Well, congratulations again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to Yanya taking a win again. Great victory from her. Well, route setting, we've talked about a lot during this competition. So let's hear more from the guys setting it here in Jakarta. Let's hear from them. I'm here with chief route setter, Julian. Now, Julian, I know that you guys have got something pretty special, pretty unique planned for the final. Tell me about that. Uh, okay. So that's why a long time that I plan to propose something to the route setting team in the World Cups that to, to make the same finish for the final of the men and the women. So the, we, we try this concept here. I hope it, it will work. But uh, so the my, around the 15 last move are, are in the same, the two last quick row and, and the intro. Okay. So does that presumably mean that the men's is going to be really hard down low and the women's a bit easier than harder at the top? Yeah, to, to make this concept uh, well, so works, we need a lot of chance for sure. But we, we make the things to, to make the things happen. We make the, the, the beginning of the men uh, quite intense with a lot of stamina. And we plan, we hope that maybe just three of them will reach the, the meeting point on the lips and a, 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 a bit pumpy and a more, uh, I mean, the, the beginning of the girl is uh, already also hard, but, but maybe less. We plan maybe four girls on, on the meeting point and maybe for the best one, not so pumped, less than the men, and to, 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 to make the, the end maybe, I hope, uh, working. Now, there's been a lot of talk, especially on social media. Does this mean that if a woman climbs the route, she's climbing a men's route, or is that not the case? Not at all, not at all, for sure, because uh, our job is, yeah, so like I said, we need to chances, but um, the, it's very, very complicated. It's not scientific because the, w what happened in the end of the routes depends on the beginning, because if the beginning is very easy, very simple to climb, you have to make something very hard on top to, to have the chance to have just one man winching the, the last souls. And if the beginning is very easy, very hard, sorry, the hand have to be hard. So the, the conclusion after the, this concept and this competition will not be if uh, Yanya or Seo, I don't know which girl uh, is stronger or less strong than a man. The unique conclusion will be the, the men will win or, or the win, women will win is the best of the, the year or of the day or for this gender. Okay, I understand. You said at the beginning this is a bit risky. How nervous are you for this new idea? What, are you going to be having your fingers crossed during the finals? I mean, of course I'm nervous, but I'm all the time nervous. So, can, as usual, I want to say, because you just have to... It was a long time that I, I used to, to set in World Cups. And, yeah, it, I mean, it's risky, stress, but excited also. So, <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think that... Everybody will talk about it, if it's working, the concept or not, but yeah, this is the, this is the game. I accept it. Well, I can't wait to watch it. It's going to be spectacular. Best of luck. And let's see. Well, there we go. And we're straight into the podium now, the men's podium. Alana's joining me back in the commentary box. And uh, Sebastian oh. Lecker <laughs> in the wrong place. <laughs> it's been a while. So good to see him get a bronze. Very good. So he takes that bronze medal. Great performance from him, that smile plastered on his face. He never seems to leave his face at the moment. He's really enjoying this resurgence of his comp career. Yeah, he's always seems to be really, really happy, really excited. He's a great guy. <laughs> and next up, Masihiro Higuchi. Awesome from him. Shows the old guns can still do something out there on the World Cup circuit. Yes. <laughs> I know, thank goodness, right? <laughs> Silver medal for him. I mean, 30's not exactly old, but... Uh, no, it's younger than I am, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, out Yurikuza, he takes the victory, the gold medal. Two Japanese on the podium at the end, and we will hear the Japanese anthem in a sec. Ah, he's going to enjoy this moment. Gold medal for him. 
He was so him. focused. We haven't seen that smile on his face throughout no. the competition. He was just in his zone. Really good to see now. So flowers and medal received. And now we drop into silence as we wait for the national anthem of Japan. Well, there we go. Men's podium is done, and Yanya soon will be on stage to receive her gold medal. The men leave first of all. What had, there was a tradition about flowing the fla throwing the flowers, wasn't there, for a while? Everyone was lobbing the flowers after they received them into the crowd. Yeah. Did that start maybe in Brixen with Hannah? Yeah, I think so. And then it carried on for a while, and then people yeah. wanted to keep the flowers, I think. Yeah. Which is fair enough. It's a nice bouquet. I think you can't really fly home with a bouquet of flowers, though. I've never tried. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Nobody's ever given me a bouquet of flowers to fly home with, but you can't fly into Canada with, like, animal or plant products, okay. right? Well, you've got a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow. We'll yeah. buy you some flowers. We'll send them over, and you can try it for us. Yeah, see if I get turned around at the border. Yeah, I would not like that. <laughs> Right, so the women are coming out onto the stage. There they are, Yanya Gambra in the middle, where well, she's pretty used to being by now. 23 times just in lead is not no. too shabby. No, it is not. Mia Krampel, though, great bronze from her to stand yeah. up there again. And Chayun Seo was so close. She. Yeah, I mean, she could have got that goal. I thought she was going to get it, to I, be honest. Yeah, I really thought so as well. But it makes it even more impressive, Yanya's move through that sequence. She was palming into there, everything possible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about those holds now. I guess we'll never really know. No. Oh, I could ask Yanya. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I should have asked her about that. Uh, next time. You have to go and get, <coughs> get a root set to send you one down. So Mia Crample takes the bronze medal. There it is. Silver medal. Ah, oh, she came so close, didn't she? And I think she'll be that disappointed, though. Great season from her, second on the overall. Yeah, really, really great season. Right, I see official hangs it around her neck. And then finally, oh, she's back. Hi, Mori. So the honours in the last two comps, but returning to the top spot is Yanya Garnbrett. Not the clean sweep to the season that we were all sort of thinking she was going, well, obviously wanted to go for it at the beginning, but not bad. All goals and two silvers. Yeah. Incredible from the, our Olympic gold medalist, and she's back on the top spot. Brilliant from her. Marco Scalaris there, IFSC president, hanging the medal around her neck. Well, for the 23rd time, we will listen to the Slovenian national anthem played for Lianja Garnbrett. So sit back, enjoy, and then we'll say goodbye to Alana after this.
Well, that's it for this evening. We've got one more podium for the overall to go, but I will say goodbye to Alana now. Alana, thank you so much for joining me once again. Of you are course, a, anytime. a regular on this, and you do it so, so well. Best of luck in Japan. Hope it goes well. Thank you. Have a good flight back home. If it doesn't go well, I you know, might see you back in the commentary. Always welcome. <laughs> see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Well, there we go. So two more podiums to go for the overall. That will come up in a couple of minutes. If you're still with us, we'll talk you through all that action. Don't want to go away yet. We don't want the season to continue. That is the end of our season. And it's gone by quick, hasn't it? It seems like only the other day we were all ramping things up. First day back at school vibes. That's the last day of school. We all have to go home, have a summer holiday. Sounds pretty good. But... Japan is coming and this new format with the combined we're tweaking the scoring system so in Munich it got closer to where it should be changes have been made not to the format itself but to the way it's scored and then of course we'll reassess again after that competition make sure everything's okay for that and all of this is because of Paris 2024 which is coming Can't wait for that Olympics in Paris. Speed has its own medal this time around. Which I think is definitely the right decision for everyone. Boulder and Lead though still together. And I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed the Munich comps, the European champs. But it was an exciting format. Drama all the way through. And the reason I'm still talking to you is we're about to see the podiums for the overall winners for 2022. And as I speak, we get things rolling. Two familiar faces. Just seen them get medals. I wonder where they put their medals. There's a cubby hole backstage. Well, the two athletes that are here. They'll receive their medals, so Yenet Chen. And then Talia Grossman take third place, but she didn't come to this comp, so we can imagine her standing there. Talia Grossman takes third place in 2022 overall result. Some imagination here. She's standing up there, she's waving, she's smiling. She's got the flowers, medal around her neck. Well done, Natalia. Took the overall bouldering. Oh, Jan So takes the silver second place in 2022. Always pushing Yan Yagambre. She takes silver here this evening. Well, not even a silver trophy instead of a silver. It's not a medal. Yanya Garbrett takes the overall victory. It was sewn up before this comp, and it just shows the level of her strength and dominance within climbing. The others are coming close. I'm Ori pushed her. Two goals for I in the last couple of comps. Competition can only increase the excitement for us all and the level for everyone. But Yanya Garbrett right now gets to enjoy this moment, the trophy in her hands. Once again, we will hear the Slovenian national anthem ring out across the stadium. Let's enjoy that, shall we?
Congratulations to everyone and Yang Yagambrett for taking that victory. The men will come next. They share the top spot of the podium for now. And her teammate Luca Potager will take that top spot position in a couple of minutes. will stand up there. We'll hear the Slovenian national anthem once more. So Luca Potija wins the overall. Taisei Homer in second place and Jesse Gruper in third. Both of those athletes could have won if things had gone differently here in Jakarta. It wasn't to be though. Luca, a well-deserved overall victory. Slovenia has a men's winner once again. Just waiting for the men to come onto the stage now. Crowd's still here enjoying, sniffing out the autographs. Oh, here we go. The final podium of the year for the World Cups. Kurtz Russell. Spotlight shines. Our next set, lead onto the stage. All of them here, of course. Jesse Gruper at the front, Luca in the middle. Taisei Homer on the left for second place. So here we go, last medals giving out. Marcus Claris has got his medal hanging task to do. Jesse Gruper takes the third place finish. Team USA coming strong this year. Lots of potential coming into 2023 and beyond. He had a great season. Lovely man as well. Taisai Homer. Oh, we've watched some great fights from him throughout the year. Didn't see him in the finals here tonight. Missed out, a shame. But enough for the second place finish. And finally, the overall winner for 2022 for the men is Luka Potijak from Slovenia. Luca Potager on top. Well, as the final notes die in the stadium, we say goodbye to IFSC World Cup climbing for 2022. Don't worry, though, we're back in Japan for the combined format. Lots of exciting stuff to come. And there are our finalists. Well, 
That's it for this year of World Cups. Thank you so much for joining me throughout the season. We'll be back in Japan. I hope you enjoyed tonight. What a finals, what a location, what a country. And we'll be back for more action in the near future. I'll see you soon, everyone.